Hello, and welcome to Wyverns and Weirdos Fathomless, the D&D podcast set in the world of Fiala. I'm your Dungeon Master Darby, and joining me as always are Eddie, playing Tibble, Mitch, playing Neris, Jake, playing the Fishman, Joe, playing Alton, Laura, playing Rue, Emily, playing Cerise, and Zoe, playing Loren. Let's jump into it. We last left off the Red Phoenix crew members who were staying aboard the Polaris kind of wreaked a sort of psychological havoc on various members of the Polaris. Loren updating Neris on a detail of her conversation with Janice that she forgot to mention, and Cerise aggressively flirting with Fishman. And maybe getting some headway? Uh, the poor choice of words, but, uh, <laughs> we also had a sequence from far away that most of the players are not privy to. So, what would folks like to do? It's probably around midday, maybe a little later at this point. Well, um, Neris normally, when we are traveling, is not viewed as much on the deck helping out he does know a lot of the roles and a lot of the duties that are done and sometimes he does spend an afternoon just sort of you know watching and giving a couple of tips or trying to figure out how to better accomplish a task but for the most part he is fairly reclusive today though neris aside from sticking his head out once has not been seen by anyone neris has been in his room in his study since the loren conversation he has been working on trying to compile all of the thoughts that have been floating around in his head for a while neris is very good at taking a task sort of breaking it down into little pieces and kind of throwing them around in his head for a while as he figures out the best way to do things. And then when a pattern emerges, he'll follow that. However, as a visitor to the ship uh, very kindly pointed out, that's not working currently. And on something that is very much time-based, there isn't any. So, Neris has spent the remainder of the night and the better part of the morning studying, figuring out what he knows, what he needs to know, and has written, in varying degrees of uh, sleep deprivation, a series of letters that he's going to disseminate. So, he's written possibly ten different letters to different people. A lot of them are potentially uh, people who hold information. What, something that Neris is very good at is if he doesn't know something off the top of his head, he knows where he can find it. He knows who does know that information. So Neris has gone through all of his books, all of his notes to figure out who would have the best chance of knowing what he needs to know. Some of those people, as he's trying to find information on everything that he's put off now. He shoots a letter off to a customs agent in Ankathir, asking on behalf of the Polaris and the heads of the Hydra as a requisition order for, for ship histories. A Another letter from another request that Neris has accepted. He shoots a letter off to a librarian who Neris has spoken to on several different occasions, but not for almost a couple of years now, asking for almost like a, a, a history book in a way, 
but notably land-based, talking about a, a group and any interactions that they may have had with the Pact Guard and referencing the Pact Guard, anything that has been actioned or had notes of a Lady Colleen Peacebringer. And then the final note that he writes is about a request that he promised Fishman, a letter to a professor of an academy that he went to a few times, an arcane academy. There was a professor there who was more of an evocation specialist, but did dabble in planar travel. And so Neris is writing to this particular professor, Professor Ruder, and asking about any similarities that she might find with her situation and Fishman's. And as he writes that last letter, he gets them all sent off and will try to action some of those when they reach Ankithir. And on this, as he finally writes this last letter and is not content, but aware that information will return to him soon, he will, still sitting in that desk, just sort of close his eyes. Anything else that folks are doing this day? I guess in general, just to like note where people are, Loren would have gone to the mess hall for breakfast and eaten so much food, and then would have gone to the kitchens and just like, knock knock, my compliments to the chef. Kara, who's probably behind the door with Alton. Alton, you would see her give the most withering look to the door. And then she signs something and she writes it down on her notepad and just puts, do you want to kick her out or should I? Alton just gives a snort and says, <laughs> I'll save her the pain of you doing it. And he opens up the door. Oh, thanks. You'll feel the poison kicking in eventually. Cute. If you did poison me food, then I'm afraid to say your poor junior navigator is going to have a hell of a tummy ache because I swapped their meals. <laughs> For seriously. When have I ever lied? I can't say I know you that well. Probably frequently. Fair. Smart move. I usually don't trust food from strangers either. Well, I'm sure there are many things in your life you're afraid of. But you know, if you run fast enough, I'm sure they'll leave you alone eventually. <laughs> yeah. You know what? Fuck it. What's the pirate lifestyle like? Like, how do you get into that? How, how did you join? Well, my dad was a merchant, and at a certain point, it was either be a merchant and be like my dad, or um, go with Cerise and be like me. Besides, I'm sure you can appreciate everyone makes a couple mistakes when they're younger, and uh, mistakes are easier to run away from when you're constantly moving and have the most fearsome pirate that's ever lived as your captain. Very understandable, yes. That'd be a nice mm. little protection guarantee, I imagine. Certainly more so than a very nice mouse. Oh, you were there for the whole shootout thing. I, I tried to help out of the goodness of me heart, but unfortunately you were all very intent on destroying that tavern. And that policeman sure was intent on having a go at you. Fair enough, it was a ridiculous situation all around. Many situations with the Polaris seem to turn ridiculous. Certainly a different kind of crew, for sure. How is it, I mean, on the pirate crew? That certainly must have been a bit of a step up from the merchant life. Depends who you ask. My dad's a very good merchant. Frankly, I made the worst fiscal decision. But oh. I have more fun. And you know, it's basically doing what you all are doing. But we don't answer to anyone except the captain. And, you know, her whims, which generally lead us in the correct direction. Whose reins are you under, then? Well, I guess at the moment, a uh, shitty job as a cook. <laughs> it's not really... I don't know, do you ever think about, what am I going to leave behind after I die? <laughs> Always liked the idea of piracy, you know? It's a strange dream for a small child. <laughs> That's definitely not what I was dreaming back then, but a lot of things are better than this. Oh, what were you dreaming about, Alton? Well, got a fair few lessons on how to string along countries, pretty much. Control the conflicts. 
Politics? Hmm. Oh. Can't imagine you as a politician. Oh, believe me, no one could. I can barely imagine you as a cook and I'm eating your feckin' food. Yeah, that wasn't my um, goal either. No, um, just a second. He just ducks back into the kitchen, grabs out one of his pistols from the hiding place in there, and then brandishes it. This model kind of reminds me of what my uh, family used to make back in the day. That's why it caught my eye. Weapons bring a lot of power. We weren't nobility or anything of the sort, but we certainly had that influence. So you got a lot of blood on your hands. Generational. Alison's just kind of looking very glum. Um, Cheer up, kid. It's not that bad, is it? You're on the winning team, aren't you? He just kind of like looks at her like, am I? (laughs) Are we winning if I'm not? (sighs) Never mind. Thanks for the information about the piracy. Who knows, maybe I'll go through that career path in the future. Well, if you're ever looking for a new employer, Alton's like the closest to her height. So she just reaches up a little and behind his ear, magics out a business card for the Red Phoenix. Business cards, cute. Guess I'll keep it in mind. If you ever want to learn more about piracy, you're going to know where to find me. Absolutely, thank you. Oh, and uh, please do uh, never attempt to get in the kitchen again. Of course. I know where I'm not welcome. See you later. Sure. See you later. So, Neris, I think you alerted me to something you wanted to do. So, Neris, after sort of resting his head and thinking to himself, maybe now is a good chance to sort of calm down after everything that happened last night. So he just kind of closes his eyes for a little bit, intending to meditate, but just sitting up in his chair. And after completely falling asleep, a wave kind of hits the side of the ship and sort of rocks his head forward. And as it smacks into the desk, he sits himself bolt upright again and looks around for a second, almost lost, like he doesn't know where he is. Just catches himself and rubs his eyes, which are probably blood red at this point, both from the stress and emotions of the day previous and the lack of sleep. Neris kind of stands up, stretches a little bit, looks down at his desk at all the different notes that he's got and just goes around to the front of the desk and picks up a map that has sort of fallen off. Just kind of looks at it and looks at a couple of locations that he sort of circled and looks at one with like a question mark over the top of it. Kind of thinks for a little bit and then with like a start goes from sort of a confused pondering pace to a full sprint in about a second where he's got the map sort of tucked underneath his arm and he's like running as if he's just got an idea and now is the moment to act on it. So he ducks out the door into the corridor, makes it about halfway across, and then turns around, runs back into his room, grabs his little satchel with all his notes and everything, and then runs back out again. He is going to try and find probably either Fishman or the captain, probably looking for Fishman, I think, to start with. Neris will uh, look up at the crow's nest and then look down at all his belongings that he has and back up to the crow's nest and like looks at the ladder again and back up to the crow's nest and all the belongings he has and it sort of catches his breath he goes no Fishman does because he would have noticed this as well would probably call that I can come down to you if you'd like Oh, well, I mean, only if that's uh, what uh, you were planning on to actually, I was uh, just passing. Um, I would, that would, uh, that would be lovely. Thank you. Yeah. Fishman comes down the ladder. Therese (laughs) does just aside to Fishman as he waves. She's like, I know you don't like anyone insulting him, but he is a little strange. Don't you think? Oh, he is very strange, but I would say he's probably the least strange on this vessel. As he then turns around and just jumps off with a salute and then grabbing onto the ladder going down, avoiding any and all splinters, please. You seem flustered. Oh, do I? No, everything is fine. I um, was hoping to catch you. Also, by the way, um, I sent, do you remember when we had a conversation? It seems like so long ago, oh my goodness. Um, we were talking um, 
end. Uh, you, do you remember a little while ago we were attacked by something very large that wanted to kill us, but mostly you? How could I forget? Ah, yes, of course. Um, <clears throat> well, uh, we had a conversation, I believe it was over lunch, um, when I was unable to finish my lunch uh, because it had uh, Captain Footprints and bread in it. And we had a conversation um, that then resulted in me offering to look into everything to do with the different planes uh, with yourself and everything. And I said, if I found anything out, then I would bring the information to you. Yes, I do remember this. And thank you for following that up, if that's what this is about. Oh, perfect. No, I have found out no information. <laughs> However, uh, oh. I have uh, spoken to someone. Uh, who knows information. So hopefully uh, this person uh, who is much more talented than I, they do evocation, so Uyaki, but uh, they do know some uh, some things uh, about uh, planar travel. So they will hopefully be able to write uh, back to me and then I will tell you what they know. And I just wanted to tell you that we are progressing. You seem like you want to get to something, though. You of course. are holding what seems to be is that a, a, map? a map. Yes. Ha! Oh, look, it's a map. Okay. Um. Um. And he kind of like looks around a little bit. You uh, are flustered again. I have not slept. Okay. So, and Nerys like sits down just in the middle of the deck and rolls out this map. And it is sort of like it's a partial map of the Isles. And Nerys goes, "Okay. So, you are navigator. Yes." Is that is a question of rhetoricals? You don't need to answer that. I know you are a navigator. We hired you. Um, so, this map, we are here ish. You know better than I. Are. We are about here. Anchor there, which is our destination, is over here, right? You're with me so far? To my knowledge, yes. Perfect. Do you remember when we traveled here? When we went from Anchor there to here? It was sort of a straight line, yes. Yes. yes, I would very much not like to do that again. No, we would not like to do that. So what I think is we take a little bit of a curve because we don't want to run into your friend again because he did not seem very happy to see us. What if we take a bit of a curve, take maybe add a couple of days to the journey, I'm not sure, and we visit this island and Neris points to the island that was referenced in Janice's journal about the facility that he met Anna on. Do you have any reason to visit this island? We yes. could simply just go past it. Was that, oh, well, what a great suggestion. We should simply go past it. I like that. But if there is a reason to visit this island and if it is friendly. Uh, yes, and I don't know. Right. You seem to have some grand plan here and I feel like I'm going, I'm only getting half of it. Oh, I absolutely, that is, that is the beauty. And you see, like, Neris is, like, wide-eyed. He's red, puffy, like, bags under the eyes. Giving off, like, very, standing in front of a wall with, like, red tape pointing to different things. Just sort of, like, that kind of half-crouched kind of vibe. And Neris responds with, well, no, I don't actually, um, no, I don't know what's going to happen. And that is wild because I normally do know what is going to happen, but now I don't know what is going to happen, but I know that we will possibly find answers there or maybe more questions, but more questions can provide the means to getting more answers in the future. Harris, are you okay? No. I have learned very many things about myself in the last 24 hours, and I do not like any of them. So I am trying to fast track changing everything about myself because that is better. I disagree, but I'll help you with this one thing, and then you will go see a doctor. If there is time, yes, absolutely. We will make time. We'll, we'll, put, we'll, we'll have a discussion about that. Absolutely. We will do this first. So, let okay. us finish. You said this will give us answers. Is yes, this maybe. perhaps pertaining to my question? asking you uh, no. for assistance no absolutely not um that was uh no uh, hopefully the professor that i uh, uh sent a letter to they will give us information about yourself and other people will give me information about other things and this will hopefully give me information or give us information uh about uh well i mean i'm i'm very i i keep a lot of things to myself that is a detriment to a great many people is it not 
somewhat some things you should keep to yourself mm. however you have stopped talking right to the point where i wanted you to say a little bit more but you you stopped could you just finish that train of thought this island will help us with finding janus so fishmen will probably like slouch a little bit kind of like a tenseness has eased we will do this you honestly should have started with that Oh, but the more important part is the map and changing the, the course direction. And now everything that we have said after that is uh, extra time where we have not changed direction of the course. So the more important part was the, the map, just where I led with that, I think. Yes. We will speak with the captain. We will change course. I will help you with whatever else you need to do today so that you can go get help. Or at least some sleep. Oh no, I had some. Sleep. We're fine. Uh, you I, need I more. Could, perhaps yes. Um, oh, there is more to do. Ha! Huh? Uh, do you need this to keep the map? Fishman will take out his book and do some scribbles. Perfect. While you do that, you just keep it. That's fine. I don't need it. I have copies. Bye. And Darius will just run. <laughs> Neris is going to uh, do like a little half jog kind of thing. He's still like holding his satchel because it was like just draped over his shoulder and it's like banging into his side and he doesn't want to get bruised or anything. So he's just going to like hold it as he's bopping along um, and he's going to go back into his study and then turn around, go back out to the mess hall, grab bits of bread or something or rather and be like, hello, everybody. Yes, everything is fine. Bread. Perfect. Thank you. Bye. And we'll go back to his study and continue working. Who is currently on the deck at this moment? Tibble steering, Fishman. I will note just for the record that I did roll a cheeky perception to see if Tibble had noticed or overheard any of that conversation and he got a four, so probably not. I think at one stage, someone might update the person who is steering the ship of the course that they're going if it's different from what they had. Probably not long after that moment. There is almost like a pulse wave of arcane energy that spreads out from the center of the deck. You see a number of figures appear from the center of this arcane pulse wave that are familiar to those members of the Polaris who are on the deck. They are two humans, one older, one younger, a large toad-like bestial creature, what appears to be an ogre draped in chains, a Cambian red-skinned man with leathery bat-like wings, and a very familiar figure with a toothy shark-like maw. Does Janus have any words as he appears before his old crew? I guess a little flash impression for everyone on the deck. Janice looks like you remember him. The same armor, the same weapon, the same face. Couple of seconds more, he looks worn. He looks like it's been a long, long two weeks. His blonde hair, usually neat even when he was hauling cargo all over the deck, is now strewn, wild to match the gleam of his eyes. The same as ever, but changed a long, long two weeks. One second more. Janice's armor is scuffed, unpolished, his appearance unkempt, though not incredibly dirty. There are bruises and some cuts, newly formed and two weeks old at most. He has been injured and beaten, and now he is here. And as he spreads out the storm grey celestial wings he has manifested at this point, he points his glaive and his voice booms out. Ha! Huh, Polaris, my old friends. Oh, may Shognet bring joy and many armed destruction upon this oncoming storm as the clouds above begin to swirl. And to echo the sentiment, Silenon says, Come on, boys, we've got work to do. And can I get everyone to roll initiative, please? Darby, I don't want to. Also, Tibble rolled a five. Tibble looks in shock at what is happening again. And I think when the arcane magic first materializes, he probably looked up to where Cerise was and called out and asked her, is this you lass? You best tell me if it is. But then that fades away as the familiar figures appear. Oh God, it um, makes sense because she was probably walking up the stairs and heard this sound of the storm 
And she recognizes Storms, but she recognizes this one too late. 13. Neris? Uh, so, quick question. Is initiative an ability check? It is. So I would get disadvantage. Perfect. Yes. That's a natural one. What does it total up to? Uh, actually, seven now. Alton. Alton got a 17. I guess he's got quite keen hearing. Janice. Uh, surprise everyone. Uh, it's an 18 for Janice. Uh, Cerise? Rolled a nat 20, so that makes it 24. Uh, Fishman? 27. And Rue? Rue, funnily enough, has a dirty 20. Top of the initiative is, in fact, Fishman. Yeah, Fishman is going to, like, he's right there. He's going to turn around and say, do you really mean that, Janice? And he will attempt to cast protection from good and evil. On Janice. The old man is going to cast counterspell. Fishman's going to look over and say, interesting. But also, is there a chance that he could do an insight check on what Janice said? As the counterspell flings the spell away, Janice says, you you know I do. Only a 12, fortunately. Rolled a 4. He looks very confident. Um, you notice his eyes don't match what he's saying. Um, he's like there in the thick of it. Positioning wise, who else is closer? Uh, Polaris crew or Polaris Red crew. Phoenix crew. There is Cerise up in the crow's nest and there is Tibble and Tim at the helm. Other than that, most people <clears throat> are below decks. If Fishman can, can he disengage? Are you still going to back away you have 20 feet of movement left yeah he doesn't particularly want to stay around these many people are you are you going up towards where tibble and tim are yeah i'd prefer to go up with tibble okay if i can janice you can take an attack of opportunity if you want Silenon and Rort are as well. He would like to, if he survives this, um, get ready to yell something out at Neris if Neris comes back. Oh, wow. I rolled an 11 to hit. I don't think that'll hit. Yeah. So Jonas spins around the glaive, but it's just slow, heavy. Yeah. Rort tries to slam his chains into you, but you are too nimble. And then Silenon goes to stab you with his spear. And also you're able to get out of the way before anyone can strike. <laughs> cool. Um, and if you'll allow it, he'll probably forward this information onto Tibble. <laughs> Tibble, they're being manipulated. I just tried to stop it and they counterspelled. Take out the old one when you can. Top priority. Cerise is your go. Hi, it is. Um, I'm assuming she's within within 120 feet of this group of people. Yes. So she is going to shoot off a good old eldritch blast. So she moves her arms a little bit and all this energy starts crackling and she shoots two beams One at the old guy, because it has been stated out loud. And the other, uh, she's going for the ogre. All right. You do have advantage on the attack against Zam. So it's 28. 28 definitely hits. One point of damage. Okay. Uh, Do you hit Rort? Uh, Yes, uh, 22 to hit. 22, yeah, that suddenly hits Rort. Um, how much damage to Rort? Five. Not terrible. The first shot, it's a bit hard to aim through all the people there as they are. And so you pretty much are only able to graze Zam. But Rort, you're able to hit square in the shoulders. Next is Aloysius's go. I think he is going to run up towards you, Fishman. And he is going to do his multi-attack. Doesn't have advantage, so it's not as bad as it could be. Uh, 10 misses. Uh, That is a 19. And finally, an 18. 
So the first attack does six points. Second attack does another six points. So for a total of 12 points of piercing damage. Next is Silenon's go. Silenon, he's gonna fly up to the crow's nest opposite the one that Cerise is at. And he is going to attempt his fiendish charm on her. So he's going to, to say to you, Cerise, Hmm, a pirate like you working with common do-gooder mercenaries like this? It doesn't quite seem right. Why don't you assist me? And I need you to roll me a wisdom saving throw, please. This would be an advantage because Cerise has advantage against being charmed. Yes, yes, it is a charm effect. That's a nat 20. 22. So not only do you succeed, you also are immune to this effect for the next 24 hours. Um, he just sort of shouts out, nice try. Strong willed, I see. All right, uh, Rue. So Rue, a couple of seconds previously has been like, what do you think, Cam? I don't think it's poisonous. Are you enjoying this? <laughs> I need to get it right because I need to if I make the right tea, maybe they'll be a bit more friendly to me, you know. I know you like it, of course. You like just about everything. And then that gaze drifts out to the porthole, where suddenly there's an unnatural gathering storm. That's very strange. I think we should go investigate Ham. Come with me. And they very gently put the teacup down, and then they're going to, they're going to dash, I guess. 56. Like, you could get pretty central or towards the edge of the, the um, top deck if you wanted. Awesome. With, with um, your so dash action. While Rue is going from the second floor to the first floor, they just kind of like look around to see if anyone else is having commotion and be like, all hands on deck. I think this brought trouble. We should move. But then they will move up the top there and they, they just arrive at the top of the deck by the end of those six seconds. Ham beside them, because I'm pretty sure Ham has equal, if not the same, movement speed. Rue just kind of looks around with their eyes flashing very bright, like, what's going on? As they see these people they've never seen before. All right, next is Zardost, the big red guy. Zardost is going to go up through and he's going to do three attacks against you. So first is with his bite, 24. Yep, that hits. And then two claw attacks. One of them is only a nine. The other is a 22 though. So the bite attack does 10 points of piercing damage and the claw attack does four points of piercing damage. Rue is not quick. So this is just the sheer strength of the plating that covers the inner magical core of that is Rue mm. that just yeah, bounces off. Next is, I feel silly changing the screen, but I do have both of your, uh, displays up so janice um okay so janice after missing hitting fishman reed shifts the grass on his glaive and then almost with like a deadly clarity hones in his gaze on one person on the ship and he spreads out his wings as bonus action he will fly into a rage which again for Janice is not anger of a sort, but there is a fury here as the gathering clouds lance out lightning around the ship. Harmless lightning, perhaps. For now. And for now. And it begins to swarm in this building vortex above the ship as Janice sort of like crouches his legs down for a moment. He's a big guy, like a very mm. big guy, um, even after two weeks of whatever's gone on. He crouches, does a couple of steps and then a leap, and then he'll just run. He'll just stretch his wings out yeah. and he'll just Naruto run, basically. Um, <laughs> if you run, you would pass by yourself. Um, True. All right. You will get to the I'll top of the stairs, attack but you can make myself. an opportunity attack against yourself. <laughs> okay, because I mean, Rue doesn't even know who this guy is. I don't even know what Janice looks like. But you know so... that they are aggressively going towards the captain. Yeah, that's it. And so <laughs> Rook is like, halt. 
and they stretch out with their arm blade and they're going to hit Janice because I beat his AC. Okay. Um, so what's on T8? I will just note when um, Tibble sees Janice coming towards him, but then also sees Rue reach out to attack Janice, he does shout out no, but it would be too late because it's not, he doesn't have like yeah, a this is all... feat that can make it happen. Yeah. This is all yeah. happening simultaneously. Perfect. All right, so that's 10, which is half to five, I believe, yeah. on Janice because he's raging. And then two points. Okay. And then, you know, Janice just does not even pay attention to Rogers, shrugs it off um, as he continues to run. And can Janice get to Tibble in this time? Uh, could, but you would have to dash. All right, um, he, he will dash, that's fine. He has the glaive pointed down at Tibble and it's like, Captain, we meet again. Janice, this oh. isn't you, lad. It's entirely me. Uh, next is Alton. Alton, uh, yeah. you, I believe, are down in the decks. Probably, I'm guessing, the galley? Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, he would have heard Rue running by and saying, like, oh, all hands on deck, and he probably heard some magical fighty noises upstairs as well. Um, so he's just going to grab his uh, pistols and his, uh, make sure his medicine kit's on and everything. Oh, I guess I'll go do what I do best. Great. All right. I'll hold the fort and he's going to um, run upstairs, probably have to dash to get. Um, I think, especially because you're ranged, you actually, looking at the map, oh, actually have cool. just enough upstairs. movement to get like, yeah, to the top of the stairs where you can even fire a couple of pot shots if you want. Yeah, I guess it will run the stairs, just be like, what the fuck? <laughs> And I will fire a couple of shots at the big red thing because that looks threatening. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, it is It is by far the scariest thing out here. So he just um, whips out a quick shot and that's a 19 to hit. 19 hits. And um, so that is 10 points of damage. All right. Uh... And second attack. Um, he'll fire out a bonus action shot just doing another one of them. Uh, that's a 24 to hit. As well? Yeah, that's four points of damage. And then I'm quickly just sizing up the thing for his last shot, he is going to make extra sure, just take a, a, a breath, make extra sure to shoot straight and true. And I'm going to use a grip point to do a uh, dazing shot. Okay. So that so, is... Hopefully I'll hit. Um, um, he'll have to roll a constitution saving throw or suffer disadvantage on attacks until the end of its next turn, yeah. Okay. Oh, I hope so. Oh, I, mean, uh, I <laughs> rolled a total of six on oh, a spot save. Fantastic. And this is an effect, oh, cool. so I'll yeah. Just make sure I hit. Yeah. <laughs> Bad news, um, I rolled a 14 to hit. Oh, uh, that is actually its AC exactly. So. Oh. <laughs> okay, so we still good. Hit. Oh, thank goodness. All it's, right. it's a big thing in no armor. It's not yeah, hard I, to hit. I guess so, yeah. Right, so nice. 10 points of piercing damage, and it has disadvantage on attacks until the right. end of its next turn. Uh, Loren, whereabouts in the ship were you? She was heading back up onto the deck from, mm. like, the kitchen. So That's she was right, already, right. like, halfway up the stairs. Yeah. She... Here's the sounds again of that storm of the fight that is ensuing and she runs up the stairs. Where do I come out on the deck? Um, assuming you're taking the nearest stairs from the, the kitchen, you would probably come out about here. Right there. Right by all the bad guys. Yeah. Cool. Well, the first thing she sees is a lot of real bad dudes she's never seen before, including a big fucked up red fella. But she looks up at the sky and she knows that storm. Heck. <sighs> All right. And uh, as a free action, she takes Eirik off her shoulders, 
throws him back down the stairs and shuts the door so he doesn't get involved. And she goes, sorry, baby. The big kids are playing. And then she takes her staff off her back. And again, you all are probably paying attention to other things at this point. But if anyone is looking at Loren, her staff has always just looked like a general magic staff. But there are these three slots at the bottom of the staff that you've always just kind of passed off as like just a quirk. As she spins it over her shoulder, she slams the base of it into the ground. And when she pulls it back up, the three spikes of a triton spring out, razor sharp mithril, like everything she has. And in that movement, as a bonus action, she uses a charge of her staff and it fills with a thunderous energy as she imbues it with thunderous smite. And she is going to... Is she within melee with, like, one of the duders in front of her? Um, I believe, because of the nature of this, it is is five foot reach. Um, so you could easily step five foot forward and be in melee with the big red toad. Oh, I didn't want to be with the big red toad, but okay, we're gonna... Or or you can go around... You could get to whoever you wanted to, but other than the humans and the big red toad, you would probably trigger an attack of opportunity. Okay. She's gonna look at that big red toad. She's gonna say, You're feckin' ugly and feckin' stupid, and I don't like your face. And then she will rear back and she will hit this thing with her trident. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. 17 to hit. 17 hits. Yay! So that does nine points of damage because she's using it two-handed and that's yeah. piercing. And then for the thunderous smite, uh, that is 10 points of thunder damage. But as she strikes into this creature, and the lightning in her hair crackles, her eyes are that cat-slitted pupil as this creature itself, not fully human, sees something very inhuman in this girl. And it takes an extra three points of thunder damage due to the heart of the storm. Ah, okay. So that is a total of 13 thunder damage, which Mm -hmm. seems able to brace itself a bit for the thunder. It has resistance to thunder damage. Um, You also have your added lightning damage that you got at seventh level. Yeah, it has 1d6 lightning damage. Part of the level seven upgrades. Well, that is a three. It is also resistant to lightning. Oh, so well. It's one extra point of damage. That's that's still something. <laughs> I, mean, I believe that's everything you can do. Neris, you, I believe, are back in your study. So Neris had left the deck yeah. and was making his way to his study. Did he make it there? We'll say you probably made it to the door as you heard something. So, Neris is jogging back to his quarters, like a little bead of sweat already dripping. Uh, This man does not jog regularly. And as he gets to his door, he like reaches out a hand and just stops dead in his tracks as he begins to wonder why some of his little future visions that he gets why some of them have pictures of Janus in them. And it's at the point that he's slowly starting to figure out what's happening with the noise above the storm that he can hear beginning to roil in the background and Rue's voice of something's happening, everyone on deck. The Daenerys turns and just bolts however close he can get to the deck, Uh just with this sense of dread. Yeah, you would probably get to the doorway, kind Mm -hmm. of blocked in place by Alton, but still able to kind of see stuff. And how many of them are there? There's six individuals on the deck there that I can see, yes. From where you are, you can see five enemy individuals. Can Fishman see Neris? Yes. Fishman will say, Janus is up here, but being magically manipulated. If you can, give us cover or take out any points to the old one. Ah. So they are counterspelling is what I got. Is Neris able to take a step back so that he can still see the deck but not have line of sight onto that old man? You probably can. I would say if there's anything that requires a roll to hit, he'll probably be considered to have half cover. That's okay. 
Nerys hears Fishman yell, do what you can, try and deal with the old man. We're going to try and provide a little bit of cover. So Nerys is going to look at the center of this group, see everything going on, realize this is way too much input in a short period of time. Let's try and deal with that. And he's going to cast slow on all of the enemies. Everyone gets their own save. Is a wisdom 17. If he can, Nerys is going to just remember that old man and just try and change a little bit of the fates around him to make him roll an eight. That is a 13 total for him. So that's a definite failure. Oh, Rort was so close. Rort was a 15. <laughs> Zardost, that is a 14. And Silenon is a 27. Uh, I'm gonna silvery barbs that as a reaction. Uh, you have to roll again. Roll again. And take the lower number. So yeah. hopefully it's lower than that. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah, 10. And Aloysius. Uh, that is a six. So that is, that's everyone. So their speed is halved. They take a minus two penalty to AC and dexterity throws. They cannot take reactions and they can either use an action or a bonus action on their turn. They get a save again at the end of their turn? Yes, right. another wisdom saving through at the end of each of your turns. So, you are lucky that I already said that that would count as a uh, half cover because Zamanir on his turn is going to attempt his brain potential ability on you. But that is a dirty 20, so you take 28 points of necrotic damage. Okay. Can you roll me a constitution saving throw, please? The target uh, is 14. The target is 14. Oh, that's not going to be good. And this is to maintain concentration, is it? Yes. I'm going to use the last of my portents and I get a 19. Okay. Next is... Actually, before Tibble goes, Silenon is going to use his legendary action for the round and make a fire ray attack against... You know what? He's annoyed at Neris slowing him and his allies down, so he's going to aim this at Neris. And you are lucky. I rolled a three on the dice, so that's a ten total. Help me, friends. All right, from there, it is Tibble's go. Okay, so Tibble, he seems a bit shell-shocked by everything happening, but when Janice reaches him, he calls out to everyone and in the loudest, most captainly voice that he can muster, he says, absolutely no one on this ship is to harm Janice, okay? Target the others, but Janice is not to be harmed. And he looks up at Janice and he's like, I know this isn't you. I know it's not who you are anymore. Please, Janice. And he is going to... I think he's going to attempt to disarm Janice without attempting to attack him. Disarm, there was an action option. Creature can use a weapon attack to knock a weapon or another item from a target's grasp. The attacker makes an attack roll contested by the target's strength athletics check. So Tibble rolls an attack and Janice has to roll an athletics check. Um, so a 15, Janice has to be not to be disarmed. Unfortunately, Janice's athletics check is a 23. <laughs> so he handily just doesn't wrench your weapon from me. But So I can imagine Tibble with his star seer cutlass tries to bump the weapon up, but Janice would meet it with his own strength. And what I can imagine is probably <laughs> Don't a very speak fair speak about what I used to be, Captain. You wouldn't know anything about that. You left me. Janice, you were taken. We didn't leave you. Please. No one came for me. <laughs> this will be fun. And the lightning around him crackles and Tibble can feel the searing heat as the lightning glances just out of his reach as he sort of bears down on Tibble. Tibble's going to attempt to disarm again with exactly the same roll. So that's a 15. Awesome. 13. Tibble, so, um, Tibble just catches him off while he's laughing in his face, basically. 
Yeah, so Tibble, he brings his sword up again, taking advantage of the moment. And is he able to grab Janice's sword out of the air or? Uh, yeah. Roll, roll me a dexterity <laughs> check to see if you can catch it. Uh, that is a 14. Yeah, he doesn't catch it as handily as yeah. he could have, um, especially as it is quite a large sword for a little guy. But he, with his other hand, grabs Janice's sword and he's like, please, Janice, stop this. And I would say, like, probably the reason for Janice being caught off guard is that probably at that same amount of time, that's when Cylon tries to shoot the firebolt towards Nerus. Mm. And Janice turns his head for a moment, then turns back to Tibble is like, you know that's not an option. And then he calls out to Silas, Hey, don't forget the boss's orders. You know who we're meant to take out. I know who we're what I am doing. And then Jazz turns back to Tibble. Anything with the bonus action, Tibble? He will expend a superiority die. I'm assuming that all of the temporary HP was taken up, Neris. Uh, yes. Yeah, cool. Um, well, you've got another, he rolled max, so you've got another 11 points of temporary HP. So he calls out probably as, you know, this all happens, everything in bullet time. And when he sees Silenon targeting Neris, he just calls out Neris's name and the sheer captain's power can be felt in that. And Neris, you feel reinvigorated. Oh, I forgot to re-roll Zamanir's save at the end of his turn. So Zamanir is no longer slowed. And is Rort's go? Rort can only bonus action or action, but he's gonna set himself up. He's gonna head towards Rue and he's gonna chain sweep. So can I get Loren, Rue and Ham to each roll me a dexterity saving throw? Oh, Ham. Okay. Oh my god. All right. Ruin Ham rolled the exact same. This is on two different dice. Okay, I'm just going to get Ham's stats up. So Ham's dex is a seven yeah. and Ruse is a nine. Okay, so both take full damage and are knocked prone. Full damage is seven points of bludgeoning damage. And Loren? How does a smooth nat one making it a deck oh. save of two sound to you? Yeah, that's also going to be seven points of bludgeoning damage to you and being knocked prone. Right in front of the red fella. Wonderful. So that is where we leave it for this week with a prone bullet, Anavdal and Triton on the deck of the ship and a disarmed were shark trying to threaten the captain's life. While most of the Sin Seekers, other than Zamanir, are slowed. Thank you for listening, everyone. We will see you next week. See you next week. See you next week, guys. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Have a wonderful week. Bye. Bye. Well, Interesting. hi everyone. I'm so curious who they're after. Hey, well, Janice is see. back, guys. Yay, we got a We did it. Yay. You succeeded. There you go. Congratulations. Right. Well, did, did you? Everything worked did you? out as uh, we suspected it would. We are all yes. here. No surprises this session. <laughs> no, no surprises. It's fine. Yeah. Everything's great. Everything's fine.